It's Ponyo time, baby! Watching every Studio Ghibli movie episode 16, we got Gake no Ue no Ponyo from 2008. Spoiler warning, here we go. Oh, uh, my childhood! This is my childhood right here. This is my childhood. Look at it. Isn't it beautiful? I love it so much. This is the Ghibli movie that I was most excited to watch because it is the one I have the most clear memories of watching as a little babu. I didn't even remember much about the plot, but I did have very clear imagery from this film in the memory bank. My family had VHSs of Kiki's Delivery Service and Spirited Away, but I believe Ponyo was the first Ghibli movie I watched when it came out. Which may be why it stuck out in my mind so much more than others I would have seen at the time. I don't remember if I watched it in the theaters, I don't think so. This information doesn't matter. Point is that this was the first film in this series that dropped an absolute bomb of nostalgia on me. So if you watched my video about the first season of Kipo and the Age of Wonder Beasts, there's this segment where I gush about one of the buildings in that show being overfilled with water and how much I dig that idea. Well, Ponyo is where I got that obsession. And when I say obsession, I am not exaggerating at all. When my family moved into the house I currently live at, we at one point decided to add a patio to the backyard, and while the construction crew was digging up all the ground to install the flooring, I could not stop fantasizing about them putting a giant pool into that space instead. That way I could just open the back door and immediately jump into water, literally exactly like what happens in Ponyo. I think everyone's fantasized about flying, especially as a kid, but for me, I could never quite grasp exactly how it would feel to fly. Like, would I think of moving forward and then I would just move forward, or would I have to, like, push my arms in front of me and, like, move my body somehow? And, like, how much control over my momentum would I have? Basically, I overthink everything, especially my imagination, so I could never fully get immersed into my own head when trying to picture what it would be like to fly. But what I can picture is what it feels like to swim. And when you're swimming, you can move around in 3D space largely unaffected by gravity. So I was always imagining just my entire house or town being completely submerged in water. That way I could just swim everywhere. Also, I'd be able to breathe underwater, duh. But, like, I still still fantasize about this to this day, and although I've had this idea stuck in my brain for so long that I can't be completely sure of what initially planted that seed in my mind, I have a strong feeling that this movie is where it came from, because again, literally exactly this happens in Ponyo. And seeing the entire town submerged in the ocean with all sorts of different fish swimming through it elicits such childlike amazement and captivation in me that I just cannot help but smile. And and that's how I felt throughout almost the entirety of this film. There are a lot of shows and movies that I would describe as made for kids in the sense that their primary audience is children, and oftentimes when I find myself enjoying those shows, it's because they have some appeal beyond what would simply entertain a child. Think Avatar, Gravity Falls, Adventure Time, or just about any of the best Disney Pixar movies. Those works all have what you might consider more adult elements, complex character motivations, continuous serialized plot structures, and just more serious serious or even dark moments in tone. In this sense, I feel like those works manage to capture multiple different kinds of appeal, which is why they resonate with such a diverse audience. But if you ask the five-year-old why, for example, The Incredibles is their favorite movie, you'd probably get a very different answer than if you asked that same question to an adult. And this is where I think Ponyo is unique, even among the other entries in the Studio Ghibli library. I think that if you asked five-year-old me why I loved this film so much, you'd get a very similar answer as if you asked me that question today. It's just that now I can better articulate why I love it so much. Simply put, it makes me feel like a kid again. And there are so few works of art out there that make me feel this way. The only film that I think hits me just as hard is Lilo and Stitch, and you probably already know how much I love that movie. In fact, I had such a similar and powerful connection to both Lilo and Stitch and Ponyo that right after finishing the latter, I just had to go and throw together an AMV of it with music from Lilo and Stitch, so check that out if you want card in the corner. Anyway, shifting gears, this was the first film in this video series that I watched dubbed, partly because I watched it with a friend who wanted to watch dubbed, but also because I have heard that Ponyo is actually better dubbed than subbed. And although I have yet to watch it subbed, I absolutely see where those people are coming from, because this is one of the best dubs I have ever heard. And I definitely think it enhanced my experience. I know a lot of people don't feel this way, but reading subtitles can limit my immersion with a show just a tad, so if the English 
dub to a show is of comparable quality to whatever the original audio is in, I'll probably choose to watch dubbed unless there's something I'd be losing out on which is very specific to the original language and is near impossible to replicate in English. Or, you know, if I'm eating chips. The problem is that the vast majority of the time, in my own personal opinion, anime dubs are of much worse quality than subs. And this is often enough the case for me that I won't even check the dub of a show that I plan to watch to see if it's any good. I'll just default to sub. And I was definitely considering watching Ponyo subbed. Like I said, part of why I watched dubbed was because my friend wanted to. And although I would like to watch Ponyo subbed at some point in the future just for the sake of comparison, I am so glad that I chose to watch this film in English for my first viewing session in over a decade because the voice work here is just spectacular. Literally every VA fits their character perfectly. The inflection of voice and ability to emote was amazing across the board, and possibly most impressively, I didn't notice any slip-ups with matching the voices to the lip flaps. That is how you know you've run into a great dub, especially when they're able to do so without making the dialogue ever feel stilted. It just brings the characters to life in a way that every dub should strive for. And speaking of characters, I guess I have a few things to mention. Let's see, uh, Ponyo is literally my inner child. Like, this is one of those characters Characters that reacts exactly the way I do consistently throughout the entire movie. Like when Lisa presents the ramen to Sosuke and Ponyo and reveals that there's ham in the bowl, the noise that escaped from my soul completely involuntarily was, WOW HAM! Only for Ponyo to then immediately react the exact same way. Sosuke is very pleasant as well, but I think his mom, Lisa, actually outshines him for me. She's got this super childish attitude towards the events that take place in the film, but in an extreme endearing way. Like when her husband slash Sosuke's dad isn't able to come home, she gets all pissy about it and Sosuke ends up being kind of the adult in the situation, trying to bridge the gap between his parents, so to speak. Side note, that scene was actually a great example of this film's subtle depth, lol. So Sosuke is extremely proficient at that Morse code thing, I don't even want to think about how Morse code works in Japanese, which communicates that his dad has been away for long enough for him to pick up that skill. It's just little moments like that that really make the setting feel real. Anyway, back to Sosuke's Mom. I absolutely love how energetic and playful she is. The way she drives recklessly over those super dangerous roads reminds me a bit of how Haru Haru Haruko drives from Fuli Kuli. And furthermore, she's just such a working mom. Working hard in general is such an attractive trait for a character and for real people to have, but I think what really does it for me in this case is the huge variety of tasks that we see Lisa do to take care of Sosuke. She works a job at the senior center, she makes all of his meals, she upkeeps the house, and she does it all like a well oiled machine, again implying more depth to the story than what is immediately shown. Also, I just love Lisa's design. It's so simple and yet so distinct and memorable. I think it's her hair. She's got a hairstyle that I, as someone with thick long hair, can absolutely understand the logic behind beyond just looking fresh as hell. Though I don't even want to make it seem like Lisa is an outlier in this department. The character designs in this film are extremely strong across the board. One thing I especially love about them beyond the obvious expressiveness and extreme utility of animation is their color palette, which is just straight up pretty. The colors are just pretty. This entire movie is just pretty. I know I say that every time, I know I make a joke about how I say that every time, every time, but this movie is just so pretty. I don't think I've seen this kind of colored pencil background art anywhere else in anime, and I've certainly never seen it mixed with such a confident, solid color palette before. We got more food porn, we got incredible directing and editing, and we got an absolutely never-ending stream of Sakuga. You know how I was talking about how each Ghibli movie focuses on a different aspect of animation in that episode about Howl's Moving Castle? Yeah, well, this movie's specialty is, of course, water, which, if you couldn't tell by now, I kinda like. Also, this is a pretty basic observation, but I absolutely absolutely loved the sound design. I'd say that the music was the primary element that kept Ponyo feeling happy and lighthearted even in what would be melancholy moments like Sosuke's Morse code thing with his dad, or what would have been more terrifying moments like when Ponyo floods nearly the entire town. Also that ending song was adorable, it perfectly encapsulates what I was talking about with this movie appealing to me in the same way that it would appeal to my 5 year old self, I was singing along immediately, and on the note of audio I also really really liked the sound effect of the popping boat skillet engine thing. Ugh, oh, that was such a fun sound. Okay, okay, so if I had to point out what I thought was the one weakest aspect of this movie, I would probably point to the scenes where Ponyo's mom is just kind of going on about worldly balance mumbo jumbo and just kind of setting up the stakes for the final act of the film or explaining how Ponyo's gonna give up 
magic to become human. It's the only part of the film that's much more telling than showing, but honestly, those scenes aren't even bad, they were just not completely captivating, and even still, Ponyo's mom always has a bunch of really visually interesting stuff going on around her. And even still, those scenes only made up like maybe 10 minutes of the movie's runtime, maybe? So like, not even a negative, just a slightly less positive. Okay, final two points before I wrap up, I find it very funny that the film's idea of the middle ground between human and fish is chicken. I don't know, maybe she's supposed to be a frog, which would make more sense, but come on, look at those chicken legs. And two, I was eating goldfish while I watched this movie. That doesn't matter at all, I just thought it was a funny detail to document. So, as is readily apparent, I absolutely adore Ponyo. I have quite literally nothing negative to say about it, and all the praise in the world to give to it. Although I can't be 100% sure, I have no doubt that this film had a massive impact on me as a child, and revisiting it for this series, I fell even more in love with it than I remember. I cannot possibly recommend it enough, this is my favorite Studio Ghibli movie, and I am more than sure that Ponyo gets a 10 out of 10 from me. But, as always, I would love to hear what you thought about this movie down in the comment section, assuming that you're watching each of these films along with me, or that you had already seen this one. In the 17th installment of Watching Every Ghibli Movie, I will be watching Karigurashi no Arieti, or The Secret World of Arieti. Wow, I've watched 16 Studio Ghibli movies. That's wild. Well, I guess with that all said, thank you very much for watching, I hope you have a wonderful day, and I will see you in the next one.